7 o'clock, glad you're here, time to get started tonight. We're going to finish up the book of Esther. It shouldn't take too long, but we're going to look at a couple other little things after we finish the book up. I have a prayer before we get started, and uh, OZ, would you leave some prayer, please? Chapter 9 and verse 12 is where we are tonight. <clears throat> the king passed the, the decree we saw last week where the Jews could defend themselves, and they certainly did. When the, the date came, when the uh, people were attacked, the Jews had the decree saying that they could defend themselves, and they did very well in defending themselves, and and they took care of the enemy. And they had these enemies well before this de decree was ever established. They had enemies. And because of those enemies wanting to kill them, they just looking for an excuse. And this particular decree gave them that excuse. So after that, we see uh, they began to defend themselves. In verse 12, we have, we might say, the first report that comes in. Uh, how the, the battles went. And the king said to Queen Esther, The Jews have killed and destroyed 500 men in Shushan, the citadel, and the ten sons of Haman. What have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now what is your petition? It shall be granted to you. Or what is your further request? It shall be done. So the first report is we have 500 that are dead. And we also have where Haman's sons, 10 sons, are dead. And they're certainly going to uh, take those sons out because they didn't want them to come back and, and maybe try to take some revenge out for their father's death. So the sons are dead, 500 are dead. And then the king asked the queen, or asked Esther, what else can I do for you? What else that needs to be done? And in verse 13 and 14, she says, If it pleases the king, let it be granted to the Jews who are in Shazan to do again tomorrow according to today's decree. And let Haman's ten sons be hanged on the gallows. So the king commanded this to be done. The decree is issued in Shushan, and they hang Haman's ten sons. So let's go back and the second day, one day is not enough. There may be some leftovers out there and they go out and they begin to uh, take care of the leftovers, those who, uh, who hated the Jews, wanted them dead. And also they take Haman's ten sons who, who are already dead and hang him on the gallows that Haman was hung on. And just making a point here, I mean, they couldn't kill him anymore already dead, but here to show to the enemy, if you continue in this, this is what's going to happen to you as well. So they made a point there by hanging all these uh, sons of Haman even after their death. 15 to 16. And the Jews who were in Shushan gathered together again on the 14th day of the month of Adar, and killed 300 men of Shushan, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. The remainder of the Jews in the king's provinces gathered together and protected their lives, had rest from their enemies, and killed 75,000 of their enemies, but they did not lay a hand on the plunder. So the next day, when they do go back out, they kill another 300 individuals, and then in verse 16, we have the final number, the overall count, of 75,000. So quite a bit of the enemy was taken out. And, and yet, as it stated here, and as we saw last week, none of the plunder 
Nothing was taken. They didn't want this to seem as if they were going just to kill in order to gain wealth or material goods. They were just doing this to protect their own life, what they were doing. So they wanted that to be known. So, so each time the report is given, no plunder was taken. 18 and 19. But the Jews who were at Shishan assembled together on the 13th day as well as on the 14th and on the 15th of the month they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore the Jews of the villages who dwelt in the unwalled towns celebrated the 14th day of the month of Adar with gladness and feasting as a holiday and for some sending presents to one another. So here we have a big time of rejoicing. We're going to make this a holiday, and they did, as we'll see. A big holiday, they're going to make it. And they call it Purim, and it's still celebrated today. You can find it on the, the Jewish calendars and things like that. And it happens generally in March is when it's celebrated. So they'll take two days out in March, and they'll go, and they'll remember this, and, and, uh, and they'll read about it. I guess tell their children about it and we'll pass it on to down to them as to what took place and what happened. 20. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters to all the Jews near and far who were in the provinces of the king Ahasuerus to establish among them that they should celebrate yearly the 14th and 15th days of the month of Adar as the days on which the Jews had rest from their enemies, as the month which was turned from sorrow to joy for them, and from mourning to a holiday, that they should not make the days of feasting and joy, of sending presents to one another, uh, to one another and gifts to the poor. So again, it's just a, a day of celebration. It is now law. Mordecai made it a law. It's, I understand this is not God's law. He did not command him to do this. This is just something that the Jews wanted to do, and that's perfectly fine, a day of remembrance of this uh, great victory when they were not wiped off the face of the earth. 23. So the Jews accepted the custom which they had begun, as Mordecai had written to them, because Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agite, the enemy of all the Jews had plotted against the Jews to annihilate them, had cast pure, that is, the lot, to consume them and destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letter that the wicked plot, that this wicked plot which Haman had devised against the Jews should return on his own head, and that he and his son should be hanged on the gallows. So, again, it's just a, a repeat here. They accepted it. This is, sounds good to us to have this day of remembrance of what the king did for us, what Esther did for us. And, uh, and also, I guess they remembered how Haman died and how the sons of Haman died as well on the very gallows that were built to, to take his life. And 26, so they call these days Purim after the name pure. Therefore, because of all the words of this letter, uh, what, had, what had seen concerning this matter which, and what had happened to them, and the Jews established and imposed it upon themselves and their descendants and all, all who would join them that without fail they should celebrate these two days every year according to the written instructions, according to the prescribed time, that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city, the days of Purim shall not fail to be observed among the Jews, and that the memory, of the, the memory of them shall not perish among their descendants. So again, just a, a, a Jewish tradition that they had, not commanded by God, but yet it's the time they're going to remember, certainly when God gave them deliverance, God was involved in this, but again, a, a, a tradition. Twenty-nine. Then Queen Esther, daughter of Abihel, the 
with Mordecai the Jew wrote with full authority to confirm the second letter about Purim. And Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews to 127 provinces of the king of Ahasuerus with words of peace and truth to confirm these days of Purim at the appointed time as Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther had prescribed for them and as they had decreed from themselves and the descendants concerning the matters of the fasting and lamenting. So the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim as, and it is written in the book. So the king goes along with it. Everything's great. We're just going to have this uh, good, good law written. Remember, it's, it's the law, written in the law. And then chapter 10 is only three verses. And it basically is just, a, so again, a repeat of, of what has happened. And King Ahasuerus imposed tribute on the land, on the islands of the sea. Now all the acts of his power and his might and the account of the greatness of Mordecai to which the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was second to King Ahasuerus and was great among the Jews and well received by the multitude of his brethren, seeking the good of his people and speaking peace to all his countrymen. So Mordecai was well liked, well loved, well respected by the by the king himself, by the uh, Jewish people, because uh, he had the people's good in mind when he went about this, trying to save their lives, and he did save their lives. And this is quite possible the last book that was written before you had that 300 year period of darkness, they call it the dark period of dark times, before the New Testament came about, before Christ came about. So many believe this is the last book, uh, and then you have 300 years where God was silent, where nothing was said. A lot of things happened during that 300 years. You had uh, Alexander the Great came on the scene, he overthrew Ahasuerus here, of the Persians and the Greeks and started the Greek Empire. And you had, you had the Roman Empire that came in and overthrew uh, Alexander the Great. And that's where we read of, in the New Testament about the Roman Empire. Uh, during this 300 years, you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees that came into play. They were established as, as, a, as, a, as a group of the leaders among the Jews and, and others that were there. So, but this is the most likely the last book uh, that was written before that we get to the New Testament. <clears throat> it may be four. I, I was thinking three, just off the top of my head. It may be four. 300, 400. Good long period. I'm not sure. Anything on the book of Esther? A book that does not mention God, but yet a book that is full of God's providence, providence helping the people to survive. Now, I did want to start a, another study. I didn't want to get, because uh, when we got next week and we'll be at vacation Bible school, and I didn't want to get started in one. And so I thought, what we do, look at some things that are sort of funny. Uh, we have, we know today, there's a lot of ways that teenagers can communicate, and we can communicate. Now, those who came up during the baby boomers, uh, we probably were just as dumb as some of these kids were. But we didn't put it out there for everybody to see. And some of these kids here, we're talking about teenagers and college kids who would send texts to their parents. And some of these texts are just, you might say, they're not my kids. My kid would ask us something like that. But they do. And if you have a teenager or have had a teenager, someone in the last, 
don't know, 15 years, how much, how long this text and stuff's been going on, 10, 15 years. You may have received some texts as well that were pretty, you wondering, that can't be my child. Ask something like that. But, but they do. So I thought, well, we've got 15 minutes here or so. We'll look at some of these. Some of them are real funny. Makes you wonder why did they, what was going through their mind. So the first one. Did you transfer the cash yet? You know, sometimes kids can want money and want it quick. A long way from just going hand it to them, they don't have to see you and transfer it. The second one, can you pick me up now? Just park, should be park. Just park where no one can see you. That's a, that's a good one there. They don't want the people, people their age to see the parents. They don't want them to know they've been picked, getting picked up. Another one, do I have to go on family vacation? They don't want to go. They'd rather stay home and uh, communicate with friends that way. They don't care about family vacations. You don't have to take them. You can save some money having to feed them. Don't take them. The next one there, I put some stuff in the Amazon cart just for your information. You know, in case you wanted to get it for me, I would appreciate it, I guess. So I wanted to know that. Some more. One said, stop texting me. The second one, what's grandma's actual name? Why do they need to know? What's her name? Next one, when does my social security number expire? Somebody needs to teach himself. Happy Mother's Day, I demoed you $6. I'm sure the mother appreciated that. And that came in a text. Uh, on Mother's Day or Father's Day, which is coming up, I don't know, do you get a, do you get a, a call from your child or do you get a text? We get text. Oh, we get. So, uh, happy Mother's Day. The next page. I adopted a donkey in your name. <laughs> Congratulations. The next one. Please don't send Dad. I'm, ti I'm too tired to be embarrassed. No, probably wasn't doing anything. Just didn't want to be seen. Next, can you bring me my science homework in $300? <laughs> Next one, can I get lung cancer from smoked turkey? Here's a good one from a teenager. What's my net worth? <laughs> Next one seems suspicious. Send me a pic of your signature. Don't ask questions, please. Well, I get in trouble for driving with roller skates on. Well, you, you could. Is euthanasia a country or a continent? Now, we all know what euthanasia is. <laughs> that comes up again a little bit. The next page. What's our Social Security number? Can you make me a doctor's appointment to find out what my spirit, my spirit animal is? That sounds about right. Spirit animal. How do you wash your face if you're not in shower? And what's the name of our mouth doctor? I guess I think about a dentist, I guess. I guess it, there's a mouth doctor out there somewhere. All right. Is there such a thing as gloves for your feet? You know, they call socks. They call. Can I eat an apple that's been on the counter overnight? I'm going to be germ-free here. Can I sit on a bench with a plaque, or is that disrespectful? Well, that's thoughtful. Can I leave a parking place if the meter hasn't run out yet? They should have told them no. You can't. <laughs> Next, can you make a candle out of earwax? Well, how long would that take? Unless you got a lot of earwax from everybody, formed it together. 
Next, we haven't been to Jupiter, right? Only Mars. <laughs> it's chicken broth, the sweat of the chicken. <laughs> Can you text me my address? The brownie box says mix batter by hand. Do I have to use my hand? <laughs> Next, where do you keep the pillow skins? We call them pillowcases, I think. <laughs> Next, my driver's license says I'm an organ donor. What organs did I donate? <laughs> my medicine says take with food. Can I just put it on top of my muffin? <laughs> what are my nose holes called? <laughs> Next, what's my shoe size? Just probably look inside your shoe and tell. If the school nurse calls, just go with my story. <laughs> Is a eulogy and a pep talk the same thing? They could be. They could be the same thing. <laughs> Do I have 2024 vision? Do I have to preheat the microwave? <laughs> and then the last page, can I pour hot water in the sink? <laughs> Is anesthesia illegal in the United States? Uh, I think they're thinking about euthanasia here, but it's anesthesia, illegal or legal. AM is in the morning, right? <laughs> Can you ask Dad why he's calling me? <laughs> why don't she just ask? And it seems like Thanksgiving is on Thursdays a lot. It does seem that way. It does. And it just goes on and on and on, a bunch of them. So anyway, we still love our kids anyway despite some of the crazy things they, they talk about and ask. It's just part of it. Well, all right. About five minutes early here. We'll hang around till the bell rings. <laughs>